Now we have mostly covered all tracking techniques in Blender. So camera tracking and object tracking and everything. But there is one more thing that you can do. And that is if you have deforming objects that move and you want to track them. Well, usually that would not be possible because if you have a deforming object and you track deforming features, then you would not get uh, an object solution or a camera solution from that. It's just not possible. But if you have a deforming face, then at least you can try something and that is to track the head and after that project the deforming markers onto a rigid body track. And for that example, I don't want to build that from scratch because that would take too long and the DVD is already too long. So in that case, I only want to show you a finished example. So it's that guy again. Um, and well, I've again, I've painted markers onto my face, but also I've built me something and that is here, this beautiful device. And it's just like uh, the thing that if I would have hair, long hair, then I could make them I don't know what it is called. Well, anyway, I just sticked matches into that thing so that I have something for the perspective. Because as you can see in this shot, I'm also moving my face uh, because I wanted to try if I can project or track uh, like a deforming image onto my face. So I wanted to replace my eye with a hole, so to say and wanted to see if it is possible while deforming my face. So, and in that case, first I have moved my head while not moving my face to be able to establish the perspective. Because you know, for a track, you have to have non-deforming features. And that is why I can use my ears, my nose, and these guys here, because they don't really deform, even when I'm moving my face, because there's a little bit of deforming, but that is not so bad. So we have these eight markers here, and I was able to establish a rigid body track from that. So let's have a look at the example. So here, that is the moving head, but in reality, it is not a moving object, see if I play back this object is static so in fact it has been a camera track so I have this moving object my head but the solution has been done on the camera so the result of that is the moving 3d camera and of course if you look through the camera that has the same effect as if I would just move my head so this is the so-called rigid body track so it is a static object that doesn't deform and now the challenge is to create these deformations. And well, what you can do is you can just hand animate them. That is always possible. But I wanted to see if I can track that. So what I did was I, in addition to these markers, I added some new markers. So Alt H to unhide them. So I've tracked these along the shot and after that, let's have a look at this. So they track these feature points and well, that would, if you would uh, try to establish a rigid body track on that, you would just fail because it is not possible. But what you can do with that is you can select all of these guys and after that, you can create empties from them. So just like in our examples at the very beginning, where we have created empties to use as hooks or just a parenting object, um, you can do that here as well. So just select any of these deforming markers, then click link empty to track. And the result of that will be empties. So if I hide this mesh, then you can see we've got also some other stuff here. Let me hide these. So we've got empties and they have been just created from the 2D tracks but they don't just move in the 2D plane, they also move on a 3D surface. So how is that possible? Because empties, link empty to track, that only generates flat 2D movement. But what you can do, if you have a look at these empties and the constraints, 
So what you can do is you can enter a depth object. So I think we don't need this anymore. So just drag it down. So what you can do is if you have this rigid body track, then or at least what, that's what I did. So um, I've just created this digital double, so to say, that we used in the previous example as well. And that was just static. So the camera is moving around. So nothing's really happening here. But this can now be the depth object. So if you have these 2D empties, then you can enter this object as depth object. And now it will be projected onto this surface. So it will still have the 2D transformations that it gets here from the markers. But these 2D transformations will now be projected onto a surface. So when you already have the axis, like the Y and X axis, the depth axis will now be generated from this surface. So now these empties are moving on this rigid object surface. And these movements can now be used to deform another object. So what I did was I have created an armature And the armature can be used to drive the surface of a second head mesh. And that happens just by having the bones that are deforming any surface being um, constrained to these empties. So each of these bones that I have added here on the position of these empties has a constraint that copies the location of the single track. So each of these bones will now move more or less on the surface of the underlying object, which is this object here, this mesh, this head mesh. And because these bones are now moving on the surface of that mesh, they can be used to drive a second mesh. So this mesh that I've added here, maybe let me hide the other one. So this mesh is now being deformed by these bones. Well, it seems that there are some problems at some points, but if I look through the camera, then in fact here it is being deformed nicely by these bones. So I have now more or less the deformation of my actual head in this footage, and that can now be used to do all kinds of stuff with that. For example, here I have created this hole where my eye would have been. And for that, I've also created a texture. So after that, once you have this, you can, it's just compositing and doing stuff with it. So one thing I did was to paint a mask out so that I can do the marker removal without having to use the uh, Bezier circles for that. It's, it's the same principle, but just by painting. But anyway, if I have a look at the composite, then it is not so very complex. So somewhere we have the mask. I guess it would be here. Maybe I can render that. Although I think that in this example, the links for all the files are broken. So eventually that will just not work. But let's see. Yeah, that is something is broken here. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So here's the mask, it's the same principle as with the Bezier circles. So we have this white object, the black points, then we add the alpha channel to that so that we have just the black points. Then they are blurred, contrast and uh, inversion. And that is now used as the basis to blur, make it brighter, like overall color correction. And after that, mix that on top of the footage. So now at least some of these markers are gone. So before, after, before, after. And if you don't know that there is something going on, maybe it works more or less, especially because after that, um, I have added a texture on top of my face. So that is here and it's just a dirt map. So just to say that there is some dirt or gore or I don't know. So that is projected 
on to that just multiply it by darkening it and the nice thing about it is it is also great to hide some of these markers then there is a mask and that obviously doesn't really work so something's wrong here so the links are broken but the basic principle is that you have this deforming surface now in my test that went pretty fine but to make it even better i did in fact some hand animation and that was that here on the other layer i've also added some shape keys in order to help with the deformations of my cheeks so in order to help the empties move on the surface and to make it really stick to the original surface i've also created shape keys so here i've just animated the shape of this object like this i've got the base shape and a shape for the smile when i'm doing this and i've animated that so just to help the surface because of course if you project the 2d tracks onto this surface then of course it is much different than when i'm blowing up my cheeks while smiling in the footage so in order to help with that i have animated that just as a base for the surface that the empties and bones can then move on so the other surface is now a little bit better like this and I think actually I know why the composite looked so weird and that is because the render layers render everything and I had the second layer with my deform helping object thing also enabled so if I render that now then in fact everything should work yep indeed so here I have this hole in my eye so let's go back to the composite and have a look at that so here there is the mask then marker removal more or less would have been nice to also remove this thing here but well I don't care so then there is this thing here with the gore and the dirt on it that is then being multiplied on top of my face and then down here there is this ugly textured thing but uh, it doesn't really matter because the only thing that I want to replace is the eye so what I did was to color correct it to add the ambient occlusion and the vector blur then the soften filter to make it fit a little bit better to my face and after that there is also a painted UV mask thing so again just like in our previous example in the render layers I have this mask with the eye and that is using a material override so it is paint it out so to say and that is then limiting where that thing here where that image is laid on top of the other one so here we are again using the factor input to limit the influence of this image and it works pretty good I think even though the thing that we are laying on top of that looks horrible here but since it is in the shadows and the mask is working I think it is quite convincing of course it's a little bit too sharp it's not perfect and in the animation there is something wrong with the deformation here but for this effect I think it works and that is also the nice thing in Blender that everything is integrated so tightly so if I would have to track this in a different application then I would be really constrained by the import export thing and uh, it is not very flexible but because here everything is so tightly integrated it is really very straightforward to go from the rigid body track to the tracking of these 2d transforming markers and then projecting them onto a surface that you can then even animate so everything is really nicely integrated <laughs> 